God bless you, my beloved. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Tonight we will be dealing with the strong conclusion of our message series, which is part two of the reality of hell. Thank you for being with us tonight, and I pray that you pay heed to what is said here tonight. And my beloved, please like us on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever social media outlet you are watching this video on or listening to the audio on. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I am the Senior Pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And last week we left off with uh, commentaries about commentaries and what they say about hell or Hades. Now, as I said last week, uh, hell is a reality. And words that are used for hell in the Old Testament are Sheol. In the New Testament, the words used are Hades, Gehenna, and Tartarus. Some uh, translations say Tartaros, some say Tartarus. So understand that if I say it either way that I mean Tartarus, okay? So this evening we will open up with Luke chapter 16 verses 19 through 31. Now understand that it takes a lot of time to read this, so I'm just going to give you a few highlights and you can read it for yourself really. You can take out your Bible, like right now, you can take out your Bible and read it for yourself because it is very important because Jesus here is talking about the afterlife, okay? And he talks about a few different things. He talks about, in Luke 16, about the shrewd manager. He talks about the Pharisees, additional teachings. And then, of course, in 19 through 31, he talks about the rich man and Lazarus. So you can read that and I pray that you will get some insight as to what has taken place here in this place called torment. Just to give you a briefing, there was a rich man and some call his name Dives, but he was rich and there's a poor man named Lazarus and he would come and beg for food at the rich man's table, but the rich man wouldn't even give him the crumbs off his table. And the dogs came and licked his wounds. So down the line, the beggar died, Lazarus. And he was taken into Abraham's bosom. And then later on, the rich man died and he was in torment. And this section of scripture tells you about him begging Abraham to let the beggar, who he didn't want to have anything to do with, dip his finger in water and put it on his tongue so he could be relieved somewhat. He even wanted to go back into tell his brothers not to come here. But you know, once you're there, you can't come back to life. The beggar couldn't come back and the rich man could not come back. So that's just a brief overview of Luke chapter 16 verses 19 through 31. Now, in this we see a perfect illustration of Sheol, which is Hades. These verses draw back the curtain and let's just have a look into both sides of the land of the departed. Now, Gehenna, or the Gehenna of fire, is the Greek word that strictly means hell. It is never translated by any word but hell. And 11 of the 12 times, the word is used by Jesus Christ himself. So here are a list of some passages in which the word Gehenna appears. Matthew chapter 5, and verse 22, 29, and 30. Matthew 10, verses 28. Matthew 18, verses 9. Matthew 23, verses 15 and 33. In the Gospel of Mark, it is mentioned in chapter 9, verses 43 and 45 and 47. And in Luke, chapter 12, verses 5. And in James, chapter 3, verse 6. So the word Gehenna is a Hebrew origin for hell. And it is derived from the valley and Hinnom. Gehenna is the valley of Hinnom, where the fire burned continually. See, the valley of Hinnom was a place near Jerusalem where Ahaz introduced the worship of fire gods, the sun, Baal, and Moloch. The Jews under ungodly Manasseh offered their children as burnt offerings in the idolatrous worship. You can see that in Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 31. This cruel worship was finally abolished, and later Josiah made the place a receptacle of dead carcasses and the bodies of malefactors, which are criminals. 
in which worms were continually feasting and multiplying. Wow, what a horrible place. A perpetual fire was kept to consume the decaying matter. Can you imagine working there every day? Wow, it must have been horrible. The place was still in existence at the time of Jesus. And he illustrated somewhat the condition in eternity in the Gehenna of fire by reference to this valley. The Lord Jesus referred to hell as the Gehenna of fire, into which both body and soul will be cast. He said that it is the place of unquenchable fire and never goes out. It's an eternal fire. And that the worm, which is man, dieth not in the flame, just as the three Hebrew children in Daniel's day did not die when cast into the fiery furnace. You can read about that in Daniel chapter 3. Hell is no myth, as atheists and various cults would have you believe, my beloved. Jesus Christ did not warn of hell simply to scare mankind. He warned of hell because it is a reality. It is true. Tartarus, the fourth word translated hell, is used only once in the New Testament. It is mentioned in 2 Peter chapter 2, and verse 4, which says, God didn't spare angels who sinned. He threw them into hell, where he has secured them with chains of darkness and is holding them for judgment. Now, Strong's Dictionary in the Greek of the New Testament says that Tartarus is the deepest abyss of Hades, and that the word means to incarcerate or imprison in eternal torment. A.T. Robertson says, The dark and horrible abode of the wicked dead, like the Gehenna of the Jews. Fawcett's Dictionary says, The deep and abyss or bottomless pit. So, as you read through the Bible about hell, lake of fire, and remember that Satan was thrown into the bottomless pit. So, as you can see, this all comes in all truth, because the Bible is true. And it speaks about it. The word strictly refers to the place where the unsaved are com confined in divine judgment. There will be a great white throne judgment. And those that have rejected Jesus Christ will be there, standing there, without a lawyer, without a plea. Because they will hear Jesus Christ say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Fire in hell? I'm sure there's fire in hell. Given the passages that contain these four words translated hell, Notice some passages which teach of hell in words that even a child can understand. Matthew chapter 13 verses 49 to 50 says, So shall it be at the end of the world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yelling, screaming, and cringing, okay? Revelation chapter 9 and verse 2 reads, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the pit. That will happen in the end. Revelation chapter 14 and verses 10 and 11 read, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And we know that. The Lamb is Jesus Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Torment forever. In the last days, when people take the mark of the beast, 666. Revelation chapter 19 and verse he says, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone or sulfur. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10 says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. And for those that follow Satan, for those that are atheists, you will be with him forever. You love him so much, you hate God, well, you will not be with God, but you will be with Satan, false prophet, the Antichrist, and every evil person. You will be with them for eternity. Do not be deceived by the deniers of hell fire. Such false teachers serve Satan and are enemies of your soul. These passages of scripture tell the truth. I beloved, everlasting fire 
and forever and ever means absolute eternity, which means without end. So my beloved, let me say this, there's a lot of other false teaching around. See, this death never means annihilation or a ceasing to exist. It always means a separation. The second death is the final and eternal separation of the unsaved in the lake of fire. You can read that in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. It never means annihilation. You see, my beloved, destruction does not mean destruction annihilation. Something can be destroyed without being annihilated. There is much destruction of property, goods, buildings, etc. in war. But such things are not annihilated. When you look at the war, Second World War, things were destructed. But the rubble was there. It, they were, it wasn't annihilated. It's still there. It stayed there until it was cleaned up. So, it will certainly be destruction for the unsaved in hell. Destruction of peace. Destruction of joy. Destruction of happiness. Destruction of, let's say, pleasure. Rest. Destruction from all that the saints of God have in heaven. But no annihilation. The unsaved still exist. In closing, my beloved, I would like to say, if you are unsaved, which means lost without Christ, then you are doomed to eternal separation from God in the Gehenna of fire. Unless you trust Jesus Christ, who was separated at the cross of Calvary, that sinners might have eternal life in heaven. Look to Jesus Christ, my beloved, for redemption from sin, death, and hell. If you realize your need to be saved from hell, submit by faith to Jesus Christ. Receive him as your Savior and Lord. Repent of all your sinfulness and receive forgiveness from God for your sins. Don't put it off until tomorrow, my beloved, because you may not live to see it. You never know what the next moment is going to bring. So with saying that, let me reconfirm my statement that hell is real. My beloved is mentioned in the Bible as Sheol, Hades, Gehenna, or Tartarus. You don't want to go to either place. You want to go to heaven. You want to go to paradise. You want to be declared innocent of all your sins. And that can only happen through receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, being washed in the precious blood that he shed for you on Calvary 2,000 years ago. And if you would like to do that, I want to lead you in a prayer this evening. The criterion is you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now at the right hand of God the Father. From where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. You must believe that. But also you must repent and be sorry for your sins. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, please, won't you pray this prayer with me? Father God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message, the reality of hell. I don't want to go to this horrible place. I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. And he is the only way to heaven. I believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at your right hand in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today, and I confess this today. I ask you to save me today. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe that through my true repentance and confession and profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I have become a Christian. Help me to live a Christian life, to minister to others, to turn from temptation, to live a holy, sanctified, godly life. And I thank you for my salvation today through your Son, Jesus Christ. In his precious name I pray and thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented, please allow me to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. When I preach this, the word of God in all truth from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Then what I would like you to do is get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened. Ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, to launch with oil, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to give you a Bible if you haven't one. Ask him to mentor you, to teach you, to put you in a new converse class, and to help you grow that, so that you may tell others so they will not go to that horrible place called the Lake of Fire. Then what I'd like you to do is please contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact us through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net. 
or www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com. You can follow us on social media. You can follow us on YouTube, which if you're watching this video, you're watching it on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, any of the social media networks. But please, let me hear from you. God bless you, my beloved. This has been part two in the closing of our message series titled, The Reality of Hell. Please continue to look for our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, next week, we, we have another great series coming up, which, which will answer a lot of questions that you may have about the rapture and the second coming. Write to me at abundant.grace at att.net. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.